Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Drew Nelson, a.k.a. Duncan here. I'm here on the Boys Podcast. And this is the younger version of Duncan, uh, but he's not as cool as the regular Duncan. And we're here on the Boys Podcast. Duncan, dude. I don't like surprises. Yeah, your parole officer warned me about that, man. You also told me to give him a haul or any time and have you return to juvie. Okay, then. Meet you by the campfire, gorgeous. Drop dead, you goof. We have to go higher. You better have a really good reason for sticking this up my nose. Look, we are down to nothing. I can appreciate that you need a little nap time, but we need your help. Oh, and why should I help you, darling? Because I can personally guarantee you that if we lose this game, you'll be the one going home, darling. <sighs> Fine, I'll play. On one condition. You do what I say when I say it. Okay. This sucks. Hello everyone and welcome back to our show, The Voice Podcast. My guest today is a voice actor, actor, writer, and producer. You may have heard his voices Jason in Girl Stuff, Boy Stuff, Kai in 16, Matt in Death Note, Duncan in the Total Drama series, and you may have seen him as Matt Sales in The, in the Strain and many more, so Mr. Drew Nelson. Welcome, Drew. Thank you, Joe. Good to, good to, good to meet you, man, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's an honor having you on, you know. It's an honor to be here. Drew, what have you been up to? How are you doing? How's Drew doing? I've been good, you know. It's like uh, I live in Toronto, so it's been the summer here, and, you know, I've been playing playing quite a bit of golf and just hanging with some friends and, you know, trying to get some work done and, you know, in, in between. So, you know, just, um, you know, just living every day, trying to live it to the fullest, like like usual. And, and what, about, what about yourself? Are you, are you having a good summer? Yeah, I'm actually having a great summer, like doing these podcast interviews. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, the main reason I started these was in, you know, 2020 to yeah. help spread positivity, help cheer people up during this tough time, the pandemic. I'll help cheer people up. I think that's amazing. I think that's what everybody needs right now, for sure. Yeah. And I've seen in some interviews, like with, with Max Greenfield. And I mean, that guy can keep the, like anyone laughing for the longest time. So, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's cool that you guys are friends. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Now, how is like uh, I noticed too, like when I was going through, so, like you were like in post production of a new project, Lazarus Protocol. If I'm more uh, yeah, yeah, that that's uh, that's like a short film that I got involved with from a, a new um, director who uh, was kind of moving from uh, visual effects production into directing. So that was really cool. So that's still we shot what's called like a proof of concept teaser for that. Um, and so that's still in post-production and hopefully the, the trailer will drop soon enough, but he's doing all the, um, the post-production uh, visual effects stuff on it right now. And he hopes to make a TV series out of it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it's like, um, I don't wanna give too much away, but it's sort of like a, a, a war film in, in like the sci-fi realm. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll watch it and support you, I got you. I'll, I'll let you know when it comes out. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I've just been pretty good. Like, believe it or not, a couple, like, I want to say like two or three hours, like maybe like a two or one hour ago, I actually recorded another interview with someone who's got the same exact birthday as you, too, which is crazy. Get out of here. No way. Who, who, can you say who it is or no? Sure. I could say. Yeah. Uh, Mer her name's Meredith McCoy. I don't know if you've heard of her before. It's a familiar name. Is she, is she like a TV actor, like film and TV actor or voice actor? She's a... An anime voice actress and singer. She was uh, Android 18 in Dragon Ball Z. Oh, of that. crazy. Wow. Are you a big anime? You're a big animation fan? Always have been? Love cartoons. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm like a cartoon fanatic. Do you? So, so, yeah. what's, your, what's your favorite one? And you don't have to say Total Drama, but. <laughs> it is Total Drama, actually. It is because I, when Total Drama came out, I was six years old. So. Wow. That's oh. crazy. And how old are you now? 20. Wow, you still like you still look like a baby. Oh my god, that's great! You got good genes. Thank you. 
appreciate that. Yeah. Like, total drama. Like, it feels really like even like we watching the show because I show my little sister like the show. I show it to her and she's like, oh my God. Like, I, it feels different. I mean, after like interviewing the person, talking to the person, and I yeah. hear the. Now when I see Duncan, I'm like, oh my God, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Was, what do you like the most about Duncan? What, why was he your favorite your favorite guy? Because he's truthfully Owen. Owen's my favorite guy. Owen's your favorite guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. D- Duncan's just like the smart aleck, cool, cool guy. He yeah. does, he takes no for an. I mean, takes no for an answer. Good. Yeah, he's he's pretty fun to play for sure. Like like you, he he gets he gets away with a lot, right? He can just yeah. Sort of, but he's the guy you love to hate, right? Um. Mm-hmm. And and uh, yeah, I seem to I seem to play quite a, quite a lot of those guys in my career, so it's fun. It's fun. It's cool too, like total drama. How many years, like, how, like how much of an impact it left on people too? Yeah, you know, I know it's wild, huh? Um, we had no clue. Like when we first started doing that show, we had absolutely no clue how it was going to impact as as much as it did, and it's it's impacted globally, you know. And and um, all every one of us that are in the cast, I mean, we just we just count our blessings you know every day really because it's like the show is still going on um you know people are still reaching out and wanting to chat and stuff like that over instagram and twitter and it's it's just like been the most flattering uh experience humbling experience in my career i'd say well and i don't know if you notice like through my interview catalog like i've had so many different total drama people too i've noticed that through my catalog yeah yeah Carly and Scotty and yeah, the whole the whole crew. What was your favorite season? Would you say? Ooh, a poly world tour. I'm being honest. World tour, yeah, yeah. Poly world tour because yeah. the singing was so catchy. I know, I know Duncan didn't like singing, but personally, the singing was cool. I'm sorry. I loved it. I actually really loved singing. I I uh, I, I would say I any chance I get to sing, I I kind of do. You know, mm-hmm. um, back in the day in high school, like my close friends and I, we, you know, we used to listen to like kind of like pop punk music, you know, like Blink 182 and that type of stuff. Ooh, and, okay. and so, you know how they always have harmonies in, in their choruses and stuff. And so we'd all, we'd all be in the car, we'd be driving down the highway, or driving down the streets or whatever. And we'd be like cranking the music full blast and like, you know, trying our best to make like, make it three part harmonies and stuff in the car. It was the mm-hmm. best. It was, it was great. <laughs> wow. You're amazing. True. Wow, buddy. Right back at you, man. Thank you. Really appreciate yeah. that. My favorite, like when I mention movies to you later on, my favorite <clears throat> movie of all time, I don't know if you like it or not, is Back to the Future. It's my favorite. Movie. Oh yeah, of course. That's a classic. The, the the original Back to the Future. The the other one I love was Back to the Future Two, which they go oh, into yeah. the future, and that was cool. I'm still waiting for my hoverboard to come, but uh, I don't know if that's ever gonna make it. Um, I, we don't even have flying cars yet, Joe. So you know what, what's what's going on. They were selling us the wrong, they were selling us the wrong idea of what the future was going to look like. Right mm-hmm. now, Jew, what made you want to become a voice actor and actor? Who just is your biggest inspiration for voice acting and acting? I I just like kind of grew up. Um, let's see, I grew up like always just like I had a very vivid ma- imagination, so I always would just kind of be doing voices like. You know, I'd be walking down the street and I'm just like, like, you know, beatboxing, making noises, like, you know, have these sort of ideas of characters in my head. And, um, yeah, so I would always just like imitate people. I would always just sort of do impressions and take on other people's voices and stuff. And 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 then that just kind of led to, you know, more, more sort of hijinks in high school. And I, I had a situation where uh, like a, a drama teacher at the time was going on maternity leave to have uh, to give birth, and they brought in this uh, this woman from New York City who just came out of uh, theater school, and she came and substituted for for the other woman, and she started teaching us amazing stuff like acting craft stuff, you know, how to break down a scene and this and that, and I just immediately took took a real liking to it, and and you know we we really hit it off, had a great rapport, um, to the point where she was doing a, a play that year and I had never been on stage in my entire life. And, she, and she's like, I want you to play the lead of my, of my play. And I was like, what me? Wow. And she's like, yeah, you're ready. You can do this. And honest to God, like that, that was the start of the ending really. Um, you know, I, I, I had that experience and, you know, I had a lot of, uh, yeah, I was the greatest student, I would say. So I was like failing math and sciences and stuff. I, it just wasn't my strong suit. 
but I had those, those uh, teachers coming up to me after they saw the play and they're like, you know, they're like, yeah, you know what, Drew, it's okay. You know, don't worry that you're failing my class. Like you'll be all right. You'll be just fine. You know, keep the acting going. So that was nice. That was really um, encouraging, you know? And, and I think it's so important at that age to have people that do encourage you. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's a, you know, this, this whole acting thing, this whole business is, is a scary place. You know, it's hard to, to stay afloat and keep, and make a living from it. And, um, I've been, I've been really grateful, Joe, you know, like it's, it's been good to me for sure. Is, is there anybody you like idolized or like people you looked up to? Yeah. I would say like that teacher in protect in particular, uh, is, is my mentor, you know, that, I that, you know, one day if I'm ever, you know, grateful or, you know, lucky enough to get on the podium and accept an award or something, she's getting thanked, you know, um, among some other people along the way, uh, that I, that I've come across, you know, but, um, but in terms of inspiration, like performance wise, acting wise, Daniel Day Lewis, Ooh, it, okay. you, you, you know him, mm -hmm. I've heard his work. he's so, wow. brilliant actor uh just such a craftsman and um really truly disappears in all his roles and that you know that's always the goal if you can do that um who else i, I you know i'm really loving uh john bernthal these days you know who he is oh i might have be i actually met him before you met him i could show you the picture i have a picture of my phone amazing yeah I'm, How I'm, was I'm, he? is he a, a cool guy Super chose me, him, and yeah. his co-star in the Punisher, Jason R. Moore. Off no, that's awesome. You didn't interview him though, but you met him. No, I'm. Uh, that would be a cool interview. If I interview him, I'm inviting you though, Joe. Joe just oh yeah, that. man. I, I I'll be right there. I, I would love to be invited to that. That'd be a fun time. But yeah, John Bernthal is. Uh, he's an incredible actor. He, oh, he's yeah. just. Um, he's so alive. Mm -hmm. Everything he does, he's so alive. You know. Um, yeah, so so I'd say I'd say yeah, those, those two, you know, and, and I think Jessica Chastain actually is incredible too. Okay, I don't know if you've met her yet or not. No, some of the work that she's putting out in the world these days is just like top notch stuff. Yeah, I, I dream to work with her someday. It's cool, like you were telling me, like the how you like started the class, like this is, in my opinion, like the origins of the, the legend. You know, also origins. <laughs> the legend. <laughs> You're a legend. You're like, you've done so many cool acting, voice acting. Well, I love your work, Drew. So. Thanks, Joe. That really means a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah. And before I ask my next question, do you want me to show you the picture? Me and John? Perhaps? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. This was back in, I want to say, pre-COVID 2018, I want to say. Yeah, when The Punisher was on Netflix. Doing its Thanks. Run on I think so. It's been so long. You know, The years go by so quick. This whole... Oh. 14 May the years how, go by. How was COVID for you? Were you okay? Were you, you were safe the whole time? Or? We, were, we were good. Like in 2020, I graduated virtually high school, believe it or not. Oh, oh wow. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And all I did was show, like, do you remember the pic, do you remember picture day? How they would just you take a picture? All yeah. I would do is show the picture you took for picture day and say, Joseph Michael, that's my name, Joseph Michael Zito Jr. Yeah. Congrats on, gradu congrats on graduating in the picture. It's like, come on, I want to be there, my fellow. Classroom. I know that must have sucked, huh? Like, like, because I'm sure yeah. you have a lot of friends, and you wanted to be able mm -hmm. to like celebrate in person, and yeah. yeah. I was like, dang it! So yeah. sorry about that. It's loading. Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see. Let me turn down the brightness because you know the brightness of phones. I don't know if you can see oh, me in the background. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the man right there. And you can tell who took the photo. I didn't take the photo. He took the photo, John. Yeah, he did a. He put up the selfie, huh? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Where where was that taken? That was actually believe it or not, because I was like, like I so okay. So this might sound crazy. I so happened to stay at the whole, this hotel with my family. We so happened. I was like, Mom, that's John Bernthal. And she's like, Yeah, right. I go up to him, John Bernthal. Oh, and I said, nice. so it was like a just like a, a sighting. He just happened yeah. to be there, and you're like, Can I get a photo? And he was just like, Yeah, yeah of course. Super oh, chill guy wow. on earth. Like, oh my god, Drew, you don't understand. Wow. He, he's what? He's what? Very down earth, super chill guy. Yeah. So, and then I, 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 a couple of weeks ago, I met my, my favorite football player, Darren okay. Waller. Do you know who that is? I don't. I'm not a big football fan. Sorry. I, I'm not, yeah, no, I just don't. I, I'm not 
like I don't know all people's names, you know, probably as much as you, but he's like, in my opinion, he's probably the you know, you know who the Las Vegas Raiders are, maybe. Yeah, of course, he's the best player on their team. Wow. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cool guy, too, like really uh, down to earth and very humble, very humble, too. Like, he, even if you like, you should listen to his story, Drew. Like, he like he's his story, like about his whole life, it was very touched. Like, he was with the Ravens before, yeah. And, he like he had problems with drugs, and then he like almost died, and then he like had like came back to life. If that makes sense. Wow! Like he like, rehabilitated himself and just yeah, just turned his life around. Yeah, very like touching. Like that story. Like if you look up on YouTube, the Darren Waller story comes up. Oh, it's wow. a very touching story. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sorry, that's Drew. Pretty, that's pretty amazing that you had to to share that moment with him, right? Yeah, I was like, oh my god! Like he's like he's like 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 he, like he says he's lucky to be alive. You know, lucky to be here. I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can keep that on if you want. I don't care. Bless you. I'm just human, man. I sneeze, you know. <laughs> it happens. Like, I, I have, like, asthma. If you know what asthma is, you know, dust. Yeah, of course, yeah. and so if I cough a lot, too, so I'm sorry. I'm just warning you guys. time if I cough, you. So. You might just like splatter all over the screen. Yeah. <laughs> now, now uh, Drew, what's your favorite voice acting role you portrayed and your favorite acting role you portrayed? What's your favorites? Favorite voice acting? It's, you know, it's funny, like, like the Death Note thing. Um, I have a lot of people that, that, that uh, hit me up about Death Note and, and say oh, that they oh. just love Matt. And, and it's very shocking because it was a very small uh you know part of, of that particular show but but it's it's impacted in, in, a, in a in a big time way but um i would definitely say duncan I, I would definitely say duncan is yeah yeah that that's been my my longest voice gig and uh the one i enjoy doing the most how about your favorite acting role you only know, like my favorite acting role um you know, I, I, it was a real treat to get to work with Guillermo del Toro, the, the director, the Mexican director um, on, on that show, The Strain. That was an incredible, incredible experience and it changed the, the course of my career, I would say. But the best acting role that I've ever sunk my teeth into is actually a play. Uh, okay. I did a play called Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, uh, okay. which is a, a very famous uh, John Patrick Shanley. He's a playwright. John Patrick Shanley wrote it. And it's it's a real type of, um, you know, it's like one of those roles where you hand an actor and it's like, okay, this is like the holy grail of a role, you know, good luck, basically. Um, and it, it really, when you, once you played a, a role like that, you know, like a Danny or you played a Hamlet or a Macbeth, you grow as an actor, you grow as an artist, right? And, and I really feel like that, having portrayed that part and having, you know, lived in that guy's shoes for, for you know, the, the two and a half week run that we did, it, it, changed, it changed my life, you know, it changed my, uh, it, it built my confidence up as an actor, you know? Wow. Now, yeah. you wouldn't mind, can you do some of Duncan's voice? I know it sounds like your normal voice, <laughs> sorry. It, yeah, it does kind of sound. Uh, hey, Joe, do you want to like, you want to go like hang out later and we'll go to the studio and we'll like jam out on our guitars or something? Like, I don't think that you really want to, but, but I think it'd be kind of cool. And then after that, we can go give Harold a wedgie. <laughs> that's so cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. No problem. Thank you. That's like, oh my God. Like, like How I said, do you do your drunken impression. Oh my Duncan! Oh, that's. Uh, I'm just kidding. That's so cool. Like you, and then Harold, and another, like oh my god, like Brian Froud. Another, I interviewed oh, him too. Yeah, another great guy. Too. Such a great, great guy, and and such a great actor. Oh my god, that guy has so many different characters up yeah. here. It's incredible. Thank you. Oh my god, sorry. It's so cool when these when you told, when you guys do your voices like. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, it feels crazy, you know? Like, what, yeah. would little Joe, like, six-year-old Joe, believe that he'd be doing this? <laughs> yeah. Cool. See, you just, you never know, right? You never know where your life's going to take you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you. And then on Total Drama Rama, I mean, you know, Duncan, yeah. do you watch that show, too? Or I watched it. I, I, I like my opinion of Total Drama, you know, you know, the original Total Drama, but Drama Rama, I still watch because my little sister loves Drama Rama. So. Oh, oh, that's that's cute. That's cute. How old's your sister? She's ten years old. 10 okay, 
you guys pretty pretty close. Yeah, she's like my. She calls me her best friend. So. Aww, that's good, man. You're you're her brother's keeper. Um, uh, yeah, total drama rama is so different because you know we 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 had to take that kind of laid back sarcastic thing to Duncan and mm -hmm. and pitch it up right and and really make it seem like believable that he's in daycare and he's that young. So so like I would always have to talk up like up here. You know, and so I kind of still had a little bit of the laid back thing. I'm cracking a little bit there, but, and then, and then in post-production, they had to pitch it up even more. Oh my right? God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it was really fun. Like, like we just kind of like live up here the whole time. And like, he would like talk a little faster. Yeah. <laughs> That is so cool. Now, which now, if you want me, if you don't mind me asking, which one do you prefer more? Do you prefer older Duncan or younger Duncan? Oh man! After doing an episode of Total Drama Rama, uh, a lot of the scripts had a lot of us screaming a lot, and so oh my god! Oh yeah, so yeah, so you definitely you definitely tend to lose your voice out over time. Uh, so yeah, I prefer I much prefer the the OG Total Drama yeah. Duncan. I like the OGs, you know, like, yeah. in my opinion, like, the OGs are, like, the best. So, that's what I mean. I, I agree with you, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, uh, can you walk me through the audition process? How did you get the role of Duncan? You know, the iconic Duncan. How did you get that role? Kind of like every other audition process, I would say. Like, there was, um, there was the initial uh, read where I had, I was reading for Duncan. I was reading for, I think it was, uh, I think it was Jeff. Either Jeff or... Wow. Jeff, maybe? De Dan P Petronajevich. He, oh, yeah, he Jeff. Jeff. Uh, I think it was Jeff. And then I also read for Chris McClain. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I, know, really, I really like Chris, too. I thought I thought my voice was was pretty in line with Chris McClain, too, you know? Um, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, and then, so we had the initial audition, which I thought went well. Um, and then they called me back. And, uh, and I think we, we honed in on Duncan for me and, um, and then, and then it wasn't much longer until, until I got the call, you know, and we were recording episodes. And when we first started recording the first season, um, I remember, I remember for some sessions we were in the, the booth together, you know, this was, this was pre pre COVID. Right. So there was multiple actors at one time in a, in a booth uh, working, cool. working off each other, which always gives better performances when you can, you know, say I can look Scott McCord in the eye or I can look, you know, uh, Rachel, Ray, Rachel Wilson in the eye and, and be able to play a scene with them. Uh, it just switches the read. It makes the read that much more um, uh, palpable, you know? Wow. That, that'd be crazy if you put Jeff or Chris like, wow, I never knew weird, that person. Weird, right? Yeah. Wow. Is, yeah. is is there anybody like you like I know Harold's based off of Napoleon Dynamite. Is there anybody Duncan's based off of? Is... Yes, I guess like yeah, I guess sort of like um like like surfer guy, you know, like surfer dudes, skater dudes. Like I like back back when we were doing that, I was I was listening to a lot of like you know pop pop, pop punk like punk emo music and stuff, and so. So, you know, like how some singers, like, they always kind of have this thing, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. that, that, that is so cool. Like, oh, my God, like, you're amazing in that show. And Total Drama, Dun and Drew, Thanks, I almost call you Duncan, sorry. Drew. You can call me Duncan if you want. That's all right. <laughs> so your name's Duncan, not Duncan. It's your interview, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Wow. Now, uh, favorite Total Drama character besides Duncan? Oh, I would have to be Owen. I, I, I think what Scott McCord does with that character oh, just like makes me howl. Um, and, and I've seen him in action as Owen and it's, it's, it's something to, to, to marvel at. Like he's, what's up, Scott? He, uh, I hope you're good in New York. Uh, he is that good. He is that good. And, and he's that great of a guy too, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you know that very well. So. I think right now too. If he's he lives in New York. But I think right now he's filming in Nova Scotia. I want to say. Um, yeah, he's on that cool show called From. And uh, funny story about Scott. Uh, I first took no notice of him in a play. I, I had never met him before, and I saw him in a play, and I was like, "Who is this guy? He's incredible." And this was probably when he was in his thirties, I think. And I was in in my twenties, and um, 
anyway, yeah. And, and then it just so happened that, that some of my mutual friends uh, knew him. And so mm-hmm. I got to, to become friends with Scott, not only just like meeting him on Total Drama and stuff, but, um, but that's definitely where we connected the most. And then we actually ended up going on vacation together in Jamaica one time with, with that mutual friend. So, so we got to know each other even more and, and uh, you know, played some ping pong and hit the beach. And yeah, it was, it was, cool. it was pretty great. That's cool. See, I could kind of do Owen's voice, but not that well, though. So. No, if you do Owen, I'll I'll give I'll give Owen a shot. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 If this is bad, I'm sorry, Scott. I'm sorry, Drew. If this is bad, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Owen from Total Drama. I can't. Oh my God. So, that was pretty good. Owen, I can't. I can't do it good. That was pretty good. Ah, so. uh, I farted. <laughs> Duncan. Duncan, stop eating all the pizza. I farted. That actually sounds pretty good, Drew. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> wow. So uh, Drew's secretly owned? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the, the fans don't know that, but, but I, I secretly play both roles. Wow. Oh, you want to talk about, like, oh, my God, too. Also, for, like, duality of roles, Peter Older, Cody, oh, Ezekiel, yeah. and Tyler. Oh, my God. Drew. Yeah, he's an amazing actor too. Uh, very, very funny guy. I, I remember watching him do uh, sketch comedy uh, at Second City back in the day um, when I was just again in my early twenties, just learning the ropes of this business. And he's like, "Oh man, he's so funny," and also a really nice guy too. Oh, I, he's another person I've interviewed. Sorry, sorry, Drew. We played softball with him actually. Real? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we played in uh, in like sort of an actors, uh, you know, stand up comedy sketch comedy league that I got invited to, and so yeah, so I got to to get get to know Peter a little bit there too. Awesome. Now this this next question is kind of controversial. You ready? Oh 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 okay. Oh, is it the? I know what it is. You know the question I'm talking about, right? I know what it is. Okay, who do you prefer Duncan with, Gwen or Co- Courtney or Gwen? Gwen. Gwen? When? I think so. I think they're just they're more yeah, they're better suited for each other. However, I think over time Gwen's like negative attitude about everything mm. would probably get to Duncan. He he you know he he'd be like, okay, I think maybe I'll I'll try Courtney for a little bit. Because <laughs> you know people like to like say like they prefer one. That's so why I figured I asked that because you're the voice actor. You're the guy that voices Duncan. I figured I have to. Ask the man yeah, himself. Ask the, the question that 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 would be I, I, that would be my answer. I'd say, yeah. Uh-huh. Now, uh, favorite total drama season? I think the same as you, world tour. I yeah, I think I think that was. <coughs> excuse me, I think that would be my favorite as well. I thought that. I mean, I think the writers. I, I felt like the writing just got better and better as the season mm-hmm. went on, and and. Um, yeah, I, I I would say total. I would say world tour. It was fun to sing. It was really fun to sing. I'm shocked you kind of didn't say action because technically you did win a you did win the season. Tech. Yeah, it's true. Action was cool too. There were some great episodes in that as well. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, if you had to pick a total drama challenge to do in real life, what would it be and why? Oh man. They put me on the spot here. Sorry. <laughs> I think that. Okay, let me let me let me go let me go from from this perspective. Okay, I would say that if you locked me up in a in a dark room and you tied me to a chair, and you unleashed hornets in the room. Oh my and god! And of cats in the room jumping cats like like you know hissing yeah. jumping cats and bees flying around and i'm tied oh. to a chair that would not be fun that that to me oh. is worth millions of dollars <laughs> i would say screw that i'd be too afraid <laughs> yeah yeah or the, the weird answer but yeah 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 or the ones I would would also be afraid of doing would be the you know, the fooding eating ones like all the gross food that they had to eat in the contestants. Totally, like they, like that show Fear Factor uh, back yeah. in the day when Joe Rogan was still not like podcast Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, that, that that stuff was scary. I don't I don't know if I yeah. could ever eat like a tarantula or a. You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. So the, so if you come to Chicago, I'll give you any chance. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, is that a delicacy in Chicago? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're known for our pizza. That's what we're known for. Oh pizza. yeah, man! Deep dish Chicago pizza. That's that's the stuff right there. Gotcha. Is that your favorite? I like pizza, burgers, and pasta. But probably burgers. If I'm being honest, burgers. Burger, burger, right? Yeah. What do yeah. you What do you put on a burger? Do you Do you like to put all the different mm -hmm. stuff in it, or or are you pretty minimal? I like to put everything on there except two things: onions and pickles. Yeah, I don't. I don't like onions, but I love. I love pickles. So that that makes us do. Yeah, that would be the difference. Yeah, see pickles. pickles? Whenever I eat a pickle, it tastes too sweet. Or it's too. Oh, I don't know. It's it's weird, it is. It is a. Uh, yeah, it's it's a weird uh, uh, texture for sure. Yeah. When you're, when you're eating it. Yeah. 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 I, I, remember, I know this is. I don't know if you heard in the Max Greenfield interview with the bocce pizza. Do you hear about that? The big slices of pizza. Yeah. Would you be down to eat that? Of course. Okay. That's a big slice. It's like 30 oh, inches. Yeah. Like the, the big, you know, like the bigger, the better slice. Right. So I love pizza too, but I, but I think uh, Mexican food is like tacos, soft tacos or something, you know, um, <clears throat> I, I'd say that's probably one of my favorites on a nice summer day, you know, and tacos. Now, uh, now the next question, this might be another, this is another good one. I, I always like to ask this to like, to, like the total drama castmates. Yep. Did you hear about the two new seasons? Yeah. I did. Yeah, that's that's really exciting for them, you know, that they're rebooting it and that that there's like a a, a demand to want to see more, you know? Yeah. Um I I yeah, you know, I don't know uh what type of plans they have for it necessarily. Um mm -hmm. but uh but you never know. Maybe maybe they'll uh ask Duncan to to come and shake things up a little bit. You never know, right? That'd be cool if we saw Duncan come back. I would love that. That'd be cool. Get the OG back, you know? Yeah, man, of course. Yeah. Now, yeah. this question might really like, if you were really on an island, what three famous people, dead or alive, would you bring with you on your island? Another really good question. Thank you. Um, hmm. I love to laugh. Like, I, I, any chance I can just get to get to like hang with my buds and just laugh or whatever that 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 to me is like pretty blissful so having said that <clears throat> i'd say you put an you put me on an island with will ferrell jack black and paul rudd and i'm, I'm at paul a, rudd and i'm having a great time you know <laughs> having a party having a party what having a party you having a, just nice having a party just like you know goofing off and you know, get cracking each other up and 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 just like sort of laughing the uh you know the the strandedness of of being on an island away. You know, oh, I, I met Paul Rudd. You mentioned Paul Rudd. I met him. That's incredible. He's, he's a, so funny. He's a great actor too. Like, oh my gosh, he's been so many cool things. Yeah, he's 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 had such an amazing career, and I I love that his career has gone towards comedy. Yeah. You know, yeah. more Great. more so than anything else, because uh, he is funny. You, you know was really funny who I really enjoyed the interview too was it do you know who Ben Schwartz is at all? You know ben Schwartz. He what what is he in again? He was in Parks and Recreation, yeah. Sack, the Hedgehog, you know, the live action movie. Yeah. A whole bunch of stuff. Like there's it's whole too much to name for that. <laughs> so much That's cool. Movie. Yeah, no, I recognize the name. I just I, I I'm I think I have his his face in my head, but if it helps people also know this is comedy duo Schwartz and Middle Age. Oh, okay. Is it Middle Ditch from the guy from uh, uh, from Halt and Catch Fire? Is that? I, him? Think, I think that is. Yeah. Him. Cool. You, know, you might know. Him. <laughs> I've heard of. Him. Yeah, right. yeah, I think he's Canadian, but I've never I've never met him before. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Now, is there a role you would love to do that you haven't done yet in a movie, TV show, play? Um. Hmm. I'm actually writing a screenplay right now that that I I really want to play that role. Uh, it's very much based on on me, so it, it, it's it's an opportunity to like really exercise, um, just really bring my my whole self to to something and and it be, it be very exposing, you know. 
uh, very challenging. So, so I would say that, and, and I hope to make that within the next year or two, I'd say. Um, and then what else? What else? I wish I played, you know, Daniel Day Lewis played, um, Billy, what was it? Billy, the butcher, Bob, the butcher, uh, from gangs in New York. And that, that was an incredible, incredible performance. Uh, yeah, so I'd I'd say I'd say that. You, I could see you being like in a like a horror movie, like a Scream. Friday. Yeah. I, I could see you being in those roles. All right, Let's, we should make it happen. You, you, your people call my people. You know. Got you. Like I could see that. Like <laughs> you would be like the lead. I could see it. I could see it. A movie. A movie like the what? Almost like a Scream. Fire their teeth. Like something like a horror genre. I could see okay. it. I could do see you see it. me being like a good guy, or do you see me being the 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 killer? I the guy with the mask on. That's it. Oh, it's like a hit. It's like both. Like you play both good because you're very talented at what you do. True. So. Thanks, man. Yeah. And now. Oh, oh, you were saying? Sorry. So I no, 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 no. I, I just cut you off. I was gonna say I actually believe it or not is a hobby. Write scripts. And I want to become a director. So. Amazing. Perfect. Perfect. That's great. What type of scripts are you working on? I do uh, comedy, action, adventure, horror. So. Wow, you do everything. How did you learn how to write a script? You just sort of. Uh, just took it as a hobby. Yeah, you're just like, I'm just going to teach myself. I'm just going to try it and see, see yeah. how it goes. Yeah, I, I, I try to write, like, at least, at least try to write 10 pages a day. That's Good for you. Little, so. That's, man, if you, can, if you can maintain that consistency, you're, you're, you're going to have a bunch of screenplays that Thank are you. ready to go. So that's, that's amazing. I'm inspired by you saying that, to be honest. It'd be an honor to have Drew Nelson as the lead, you know. That'd be cool. Joe, like I said, let's make it happen. You call, you know, your people call my people. You'll be represented by some of the big agencies by that time. And, uh, gotcha. you know, I'll be, I'll be looking for work. And <laughs> <laughs> I, got you. I got you. And I would be with also knowing one of my good friends who's actually in the strain with you, Sean Aston. You know Sean Aston? Yeah, I, I met Sean uh, at the table read for that, for that pilot episode and i i saw him a couple times on set but a lot of our scenes we weren't weren't lined up together Where's so that? yeah we didn't we never had any scenes together but um How you will but scene. i met him a couple times and he was great i mean like rudy oh is one God. of my all-time favorite films and and like you know he, mm -hmm. he just he just broke my heart in that in that film you know well now if you're in this movie you guys can meet <laughs> yeah you know? sean's gonna be in it too yeah, he actually, because he's actually another good buddy of mine, too, besides Max. Another good buddy of mine is Sean Aston. Right on. Okay. What's so, he yeah. up to these days? Is he is he working on anything? or? Right now, he's working on a movie in Louisiana, like a okay. Western type of movie. So, oh, nice. Be cool to see. That's Sport great. Yeah. So, and sorry if I cut you off. Man. You were here to say something, but I feel bad. I'm sorry. Oh, now I... No, no, it, it wasn't of importance at all. So I, 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 I cut you off, so I didn't want to... I didn't want to, you, you to lose your track of mind. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, yeah. now uh, over the years of your career, do you still keep touch with co-stars and directors you have worked with? Yeah, I do. Um, I, uh, I met a lot of great people doing The Strain. Um, so I, I, I work with Guillermo a couple times now uh, and, uh, and, and this other producer on that show, Carlton Cuse. Uh, you know, he just put me in his Apple series that, uh, just aired on the 12th of August. So, so it was great to reunite with him and, uh, Natalie Brown, I keep in touch with, they played Kelly Goodweather. She's lovely. Um, and, uh, who else do I keep in touch? A, a bunch of people. That, yeah. Like a bunch of like, pro, uh, you know, director, producer assistants that, that live in uh, California. So I'm, I'm good friends with both those guys. And, yeah, I try to I try to maintain a uh, connection with people that I work with. That that's like definitely um cuz you cuz you spend such a long time with with people, right? And there is the tendency to just lose touch. But I feel like um one thing I I feel like I am good at is is maintaining contact with people and just uh I don't know. I think it's important, you know? I think if like someone crosses your mind one day, you haven't talked to them in a long time, I think there's no there's no harm in sending them a little text, you know, or, or just being like, yeah, you crossed my mind. You're just checking in and see how you're doing. Cause you know how crazy this world is. You never know what's going to happen on a 
day by day basis, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I do keep in touch with some people. This might be tough. Who is the coolest person that you have worked with? Who deserves the coolest person? Coolest person, coolest talent, most talented. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, like you know, as I mean, it was, it was amazing to work with Guillermo for sure seeing him in action and just like spent sure share space with him and take direction from him. And, but I, I, um, I mean, I got to work with, uh, Patricia Arquette. That was pretty, that was pretty cool. You know, did episode of CSI with, she was the lead of for, for a few years there in LA. And, and I got to, uh, be the guest star of that episode and have share scenes with her. So that was pretty great. Um, she was lovely. She had just won the Oscar for uh, boyhood. Okay. And, well, that was cool to be able to like, you know, work with her and, and during that time of her career, you know, because uh, Boyhood really started putting her, you know, back in back, you know, in the A list. I'd say um, in terms of projects that she was, you know, really felt like a resurgence in her career, you know. Um, so yeah, that that was cool. I'd say I'd say I'd say her. I feel like, I don't think it sounds stupid. Isn't it David Arquette's sister? Sorry if that's a stupid question. I'm sorry. I believe so. I think it's I think it it's Rosanna Arquette, David Arquette, and Patricia. Yeah, and I so, think they might have one other sibling. Sorry if that sounds stupid. Dude. I just, I forgot. I like a you know what's that brain fart? Is it called? So, oh yeah, I get brain farts all the time. So thank you. Josh. You're way sharper than I am, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now now. Uh, what director taught you the most? Is there a director you love to work with? You haven't worked with it. Um, taught me the most. Hmm. Would you like to work with this nerd? This nerd? No. This this future Steven Spielberg right here before my eyes? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think, I think, um, uh, you know, uh, actually, like, 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 from the point of view of an actor's director, like a true actor's director, that it felt mm -hmm. like I, I was really collaborating from from an artistic standpoint. Mm -hmm. I worked with this director named David Anspa back in the day, in the mm -hmm. early two thousands. He directed um, Hoosiers, a famous uh, old school basketball film, and he directed Rudy. Funny enough, mm, that's crazy. That comes full circle for you, then, Drew. <laughs> All right, so. I I, uh, I I did a, a TV movie for him for you know on CBS where I was playing a cancer patient and this was like when I first was kind of starting out in the business and uh, and and he was just he was just really great with me you know like he he really gave me the freedom of space to to try things out but then he he you know he he taught me some technical things at a very young age and and he just had a lot he just had a very um, a very gentleness to him. You know, he's a very kind man and just had a real, uh, yeah, I'd love to work with him again. I, I, it's been, it's been so long, but I hope he's still working, you know, doing his thing because he was great. Anybody else you like to work with that you haven't worked with yet? You know, besides, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I would love to work with, uh, Christopher Nolan. Ooh, okay. That's a good. That's a good one right there. That is a good one. Yeah, I'd love to work with him someday. Uh, I think the guy is just an absolute genius. Uh, just to hit, I just admire his imagination, you know. Um, and and just like I, I just think he has great taste. I just love, you know, I just love his visuals. Um, Get him on the podcast. You could form an audition for him. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, man, we, you shoot for the shoot for the stars, right? Yeah, I got you. Might as well. Um, That'd be cool. You'd be like, "Oh my god!" If you saw Christopher Nolan, like, uh, uh. <laughs> I, I would be. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would, I would be revered. I would definitely, uh, you know, very, very much like have um, reverence for him. I'd say if, if I was, but at the same time, like in the business, you know, it's important to kind of not put someone on a pedestal, right? even though they are so acclaimed and they are so uh, prestigious, but um, you know, and that was the beauty about Guillermo, for instance, he just instantly made you feel at ease. You know, um, this was before he was winning o Oscars essentially. I mean, like Pan's Labyrinth was, was one of my favorite films 
uh, and so the fact that we even got to work together was a really a dream come true. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think as a director, it's just so important to to put people at ease, right? You know, yeah. No. Uh, if you knew, uh, you know, Max Greenfield, remember how we met him earlier? He's actually mm -hmm. coming back on for part three sometime down the line. Would you want to meet Wait. him? Would you I want love to meet him? Max. Yeah, for sure. Maybe he's a total drama fan. You never know. Is he? Never. Never, never him or his kids. You never know. He's got or kids. Yeah. Never know. What well, if, sure. well, if his kids, their favorite character, like say, if they watch Drama Rama, oh, my favorite character is Duncan. You'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, then so then he'd be like, "Oh my God, my you know, does he have he has uh, uh, boys or girls or, or they... he's a one boy, one girl. He's very down earth. Like, oh my God, like if you met Max, true, very nice guy. Well, yeah, like I said, we're gonna go sit courtside at the at the at the Chicago Bulls game, right? Yeah, or is, is it gonna be Bulls? Yeah, Raptors? Are you gonna make that happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. If you go into voice acting or acting, what do you think you would have done as a career instead? What other interests and hobbies? Yeah, That's a really good saying. question. Um, I would go into. It, honestly, I love golf so much these days. Like, if I could be a professional golfer, uh, I think I think I might have gone down that path. But um, I also love art. You know, graffiti and street art. Uh, I was a, an artist for years, and um, and it's still a huge passion of mine. And so, if I could paint every day. Um, legally, obviously, uh, you know, uh, and, and travel the world and go to different uh, events as an artist, like that would be pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah. I could see like a drama or acting future. I could see that. You could see a what? As you as like a drama, a drama or acting teacher. I could see. That. I do that too, actually. I. I I have a, a side business as an actor where I uh, have a, a separate room in my apartment that I tape actors like because so much uh, since the pandemic actors need to self tape for auditions. Right. So mm -hmm. they'll come over to my house. I'll put them in the studio. I've got, you know, a great setup and we'll record their auditions. And from tape to tape, I'll provide them with little suggestions, little notes and things like that. And, um, it's been great, it's been really great, you know, and I and and it's it's put me in a place where it's like, you know, I, I do want to segue into directing to be able to work with actors hand on, hands on more, you know, because um, it because there's just such a great, I don't know, there's a real satisfaction I get where I when when I see growth in in someone, you know, even from one take to the next, and 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 the trust that they give over to me when I suggest something and they take that for real and, and it improves their performance, that that's just amazing to see, you know? Is that the cops? Cause they're after Duncan. I'm kidding. You know, if you heard the siren in your background. Oh, you heard the siren. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're on the run. I'm, I'm currently in a, a, a secret bunker. Um, the helicopters are on their way. You gotta break me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's so cool and then you mentioned like like a you know recording tape like you said what they call self tapes one of my good friends like he's an actor too i think you follow them you might i don't know laurent petri i'm probably butchering his last laurent petri you know laurent i just recently met laurent actually really yeah, i've known laurent since 2020 sorry get out of here what, what did you know him from originally he was in a show called future man yeah yeah that's how i know laurent and oh, i interviewed him and he, He's cool. Yeah, I just recently met him through a, 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 a like a mutual friend of ours, and we went to breakfast together. He's a cool guy. He's, he's uh, hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, he's a really interesting guy, and and I, I uh, yeah, so we start following each other, and um, and he uh, he was just in this great show called Under the Banner of Heaven. But Andrew uh, Garfield. I think that's that's cool. right. And and I had a, a few friends in that show uh, that had significant roles in that show. Um, so it was cool to see. Wow. Because a, oh, what you're saying? That was a big, that's a big job for Laurent, you know, yeah. to, to be in that show. He, he's very funny. Like he was actually like my sixth ever interview, I want to say, maybe. Okay. He was really funny. Like when I asked, like, his, like, cause I'm going to ask you when I get to that question, like your favorite music, his favorite music, it might sound crazy. He likes watching birds and them singing. Huh. I know that okay. might sound crazy. I don't know him very well, but. 
from what I do know so far, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to, and this is, if you want to get in the inside joke with us, I like to call him Crazy Birdman. So if you call him, I'd be like, he'll probably be like, whoa. Okay. Next Crazy Birdman. Next time he's playing a live show with his ukulele, I'll be like, play another one, Crazy Birdman. He'll, he'll he'll get a kick out of it because I always like when I message him back and forth. I say, "What's up, crazy?" Like he he loves it. Like he gets a kick out of it. You know what I mean? Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, because it's see we like know like kind of similar similar people. Mean true. You know I mean? Yeah, cool we people. do. It's, it's I know it's uh it's six degrees of separation as they say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now now that's actually the next question. Remember I told you about Laurent favorite band or artist and type of music. And oh man, that. that's a tough one. Um, ah, favorite band? Like, I, I wouldn't say I have a favorite band, but genre of music I, I grew up on listening to old school hip hop uh, music okay. back in the day in the '90s when I grew up, and um, and so I, I still from time well I'll play that often. Uh, and uh, what else? I, I I listen to like a lot of. Um, you know, I listen to like a lot of playlists that kind of have like soul music, like like really soulful music from from the the fifties and sixties, and um, you know, kind of play that on a on, on a loop and just set a set a mood, you know. But I also uh, listen to I love you know like good rock and roll too, or, or you know bands like you know say Tame Impala. I don't know if you know them. They're from uh, I think Australia or New Zealand. They're really cool. Yeah. What what do you listen to? I actually, I actually, oh, sorry if I keep, I keep saying that. I mean, I actually met my favorite band. They're seventies, eighties, and nineties. Their lead singer sadly passed away in the nineties, but they still tour. Do you know the band? Seventies, eighties, and nineties, and they stood still tour. Yes. Ro- Ro- Rolling Stones? No. Yeah. Um, they got a lot of big, big hits. Like, like, oh my god! Like, and their singer was like a legend. In my opinion, he's a legend. Cause he had amazing okay, well, what, give me one song and I might be able to figure it out. Oh, that might give it away then. <laughs> you want me to do? I could tell you a song if it helps. Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah. I could tell you, wait, you want me to tell you what, you know, like, what they're from? Cosby, Stills, and Nash. No. <laughs> okay, they're from, they're from London, England. Okay. Helps. They're from London, England. Jeopardy music plays. I'm stumped. I'm stumped. Uh, okay, they're. Let's see. I'm trying to think. What's a good hit? Okay, they they sing a variety of genres: classic rock, rock, jazz, variety. Nope. Queen? No. Queen. You got it. There you got go. It. Wow, you're a big got Queen fan. That's cool. Yes. yes. Your your favorite song is Bohemian Rhapsody, or do you like other ones? I like this one song in particular. It's called One Vision. Have you heard of that before? I haven't. No. It's like all four of them like wrote this song. It was, it's a really catchy tune. I think you really like it. It's really catchy. Oh, cool. cool. Uh, I know that. Um, well, did you did you see the film Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes. Did you yes. like it? I haven't seen it yet. Is it? Mm. Oh, it was actually really good. I I, I personally liked it. But yeah. I, I met the like Freddie Mercury though. I mean, you gotta talk about a voice. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a genius, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there won't be another Freddie Mercury. That's for sure. If I could go back in time. I would want to see one of those concerts back in the day. Absolutely. Yeah, Foo Fighters. You like the Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl and those? You know, My those brother guys. got a picture with Taylor Hawkins, the one that passed away. Rest in peace, yeah. He was an amazing, amazing drummer. Um, I, uh, I've seen them live a few times, and they, they put on a heck of a show. They're amazing. Do they, is that, they Dave, sound Grohl, like- Dave Grohl is just a rock star through and through. Like, he, he's just... He, he's just like this there's like this aura around him when he's when he's on stage it's, it's pretty incredible his cares his charisma well, see i yeah. think you and my brother would my brother that's his favorite band he likes them blink you said blink 182 you like too oh yeah back 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 in the day like when i was in my uh in my 20s you like my brother oh my god sorry you're like my brother <laughs> with the music because oh, he, he, he he's 27 okay 27. yeah he yeah. he he loves like the same like music you like. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, that's that's kind of funny. He he likes them. He's he all cool guy. <laughs> he, he he likes this band called Hinder. Have you ever heard of Hinder before? Hinder. Hinder. That's one of his favorite bands too. They what sing. Type of music is that? Is that like? Uh... I don't know how you would describe. Like they're loud rock, maybe 
they sing Lips of an Angel, I think it's called. One song. Huh. Okay. My brother's really into them, so I'm just naming people he likes music wise. Music is so important, though, isn't it? Like, d like, don't you find music just, I don't know, if you're having a bad day, you put on a certain, mm -hmm. you know, you put a certain record on or put on a certain song. Cheers you up. It cheers you up. Yeah, it just changes your mood, you know, or, 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 or you go on a walk, you know, you go on a walk and you have music playing at the same time. Like, it just, it, it enhances the experience, right? Or, or he really likes uh, Matchbox 20. I don't know if you've heard of them before. Yeah. Well, it's 3 a.m. I must be lonely. Yep, you know, dang, you know your music, Drew. I see. I love, I love the awkward pause before the clap. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, this might be kind of easy. Favorite sports and favorite teams? Okay. Favorite sports, like I said, golf. Golf and basketball. Grew up playing both sports. And, and yeah, if I could golf every day, I would. Um, and favorite team is the Raptors. The Raptors, baby. Nice. Can't, now, wait, can't wait for the new season to start. Who's your favorite player then from the Raptors? Uh, Who Van you Vliet. Like? Ooh. Fred Van, Van Vliet is just such a like clutch player. You know, when he come, like, when he's on the floor, you know something's going to happen. You know something good's going to happen. You know, he's going to hit a clutch three or he's going to set up a great play or, yeah, I'd say that. Wow. Hey, who's your favorite golfer then? Since you said you like golf, do you have a favorite golfer you like? favorite golfer i mean all the yeah all these uh these new guys um i mean i guess dj dustin johnson he he's he's, okay. he's fun to watch he's got a really nice swing and i i you know i i wouldn't say like i i idolize any golfers particularly but i i just love watching it i love to watch golf i love to play it um yeah i went to the canadian open this year uh which was really fun got to got to watch like uh you know these professional guys play you know you you, you could literally throw a, a football to them and and they were right there i, I would say rory mcelroy is pretty incredible Ooh. okay he's a pretty incredible player um yeah See, I really, you're really sport? Uh, you were saying about golf though i really like graham a lot you know who he is he's a canadian no. golfer he, like oh him. he's a canadian golfer yes oh cool See, I like, I love, uh, it's, okay, my favorite sport, though, is hockey, and my favorite yeah. hockey team is Canadian, though. Am I Ooh. shocked? Okay, if you don't, I'm please don't be mad. No. no. I'll, no. Montreal Canadiens? Okay, please don't be mad if I tell you who it is, okay. The Vancouver Canucks. How'd you know? Because <laughs> that was the other, only other Canadian, no, there was two other win uh, Canadian, no, actually three, yeah, I, I don't know, I just guessed. <laughs> I, I love the Canucks. Like, oh my god! Like, I love. I, don't know, I, I like a lot of things Canada. You know, that's great, man. I I like you for saying that. <laughs> and it, it, my my help too. Like my mom on her side, she's French Canadian. Oh no way! Oh, that's why. So there's so there's like the, the the Canadian connection there. So do you have uh, a passport to Canada? Are you able to go do back? Do we have a the... passport to Canada? Yeah. No, my mom says we wish we didn't know. That'd be cool. I would love to travel to Canada. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Canada, Canada's an amazing country. I've, I've managed to make it to, I'd say, almost every province in, oh. so far. Yeah. But the Canucks are an incredible team. I I, um, I do love hockey. I don't play it myself, but I, I definitely geek out on uh, PlayStation and play uh, NHL 2022 or what, whichever the newest one is. I'll have some buddies over. To my apartment here, and and we'll just geek out playing vid video games. You play yeah, on PlayStation? I admit it. I still play sports video games. You play PlayStation though? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, oh, Yo, yo. PS4. yo, yo. Shoot, you're, I play PS4 too. And I play maybe, NHL. Maybe, a lot. We can, maybe we could like literally play a game together. Like I don't have a headset or anything, but but we could like you know we could play against each other. That'd be cool. I'll be my Canucks. Mm -hmm. That's okay with you. Like yeah, yeah, that'd absolutely. Be the, be the Canucks. I'll, I'll be the Flames and and uh, put you down. Is that is that your favorite team? I'm assuming the Flames. Your favorite team? Or? Yeah, Flames. There's some amazing players on the Flames. I mean, like I'm from Toronto, so obviously the Maple Leafs. Maple I guess Leafs. if I ever get in, you know go to a game or whatever, uh, it's a good time. But they just keep they just keep sucking every single year. It's too bad. You know they can't they can't seem to get it together. Joe, I don't know what's going on. Wow. Uh, see, like, I'm a big connection because, like, when I was three years old, 
or four, uh, I think three, three or four or five, I don't know exactly age, I got a hockey stick from the captain at the time, Marcus Nazem. He gave me his hockey stick. Whoa, wow, so, that's amazing. Um, then I had to be a you know, Canucks fan, true. So. That's huge. So you were so you got you got the uh, the stick somewhere like in your house? Yes, it's framed. It's framed. Wow, that's I, I love my. I'm just trying to get rid of a call here. Someone's trying to call me here. Sorry, Drew. Yeah, there we go. And that'd be cool though, if you if you could play though. That'd be cool. Play some chell, as I say. Yeah, well, let's let's totally play chell. That'd be good. That's the, uh, the code name, right? Chell. <laughs> that'd be cool and then we were mentioning Laurent earlier he's a big 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 Canadians fan I don't know if you ever knew that ever yeah he's from Montreal yeah yeah so when you yeah. oh sorry no go ahead go ahead uh, I forgot what I was gonna say you were gonna say oh, Drew okay. um yeah 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 sorry what do, you, what do you got going on for the rest of the day so far I just probably edit some more of these podcasts and yeah Sure. How many uh, podcasts do you do? How many interviews do you do uh, a week? Would you say a couple? It depends, honestly. Like I try to post twice a week. I try to Good post twice you. a week. And it depends. Like sometimes it takes longer for me to edit because it takes. Me- I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, editing. Editing is a real art form, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. it's fun though. Right? Like especially put like the little. I even put like little clips of what the person's done. Like I'll put Duncan yeah. clips. I'll put like some of your acting. I'll put. Oh, yeah. cool. Where are you going to, where do you find the clips? YouTube. Oh, you just pull it off of YouTube. You do like yeah. a screen, like a, a screen record of, of certain. There's, a, the, like there's like a YouTube downloader, it's called, and you can download the clip in one second. Oh, wow. And, and I, I got to learn how to do that because uh, have you ever seen a show I worked on called People of Earth? It's a Sounds comedy. Good comedy show i think i think you might really like it it's it's about these uh people in a small town that all claim they've been abducted by aliens and it's sort of like um it sort of has like an office humor to it you know you know the office so it's like um pretty silly type humor and i play uh, a giant lizard alien that uh has been abducting the these people um but it's a comedy so it's if I flat, could... it's a flat out comedy. So when the, the people talk about the aliens in like this this meeting that they'll have in, in the church basement, you know, mm-hmm. we'll cut to the spaceship and there's me on the spaceship with like two other type of aliens and we're just sort of interacting and it's very funny. So if I come across a clip like that, I'll probably use that. Thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be my guest. Um, it's it's definitely some very funny stuff it, it, we only did two seasons of it though and then it got canceled yeah but it's the same uh the same creators of the office and um this guy named david <coughs> excuse me this guy named david jenkins who does a, a show on hbo now called um our flag means death which is a, which is a comedy show about a pirate ship like people on a pirate ship okay wow yeah yeah anyway that you should um I'll check should, it out. Yeah, you should check it out. I think I think you'd like it. It's pretty funny stuff. So they meet strangers often at night that they only see in pictures on the internet. Kinder. And this is how they find lifelong love and companionship. Yeah. Now, uh, what are some of your favorite movies and TV shows? What kind of movies and shows do you like? Uh, what have I been watching recently? Over the pandemic, I finished Breaking Bad. Finally, that was amazing. Uh, okay. I have watched a show called We Own This City that John Bernthal starred in uh, on HBO, which is uh, the creators of the, the the show The Wire from back in the day. I don't know if you know; okay. it's a cop cop show. That was really great. Um, Ozark finished Ozark. Okay. Thought that was good. Um, what you watch from? Sorry. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen from yet. I have a few friends on That's that, including Scott. But yeah, I haven't. I, I I read the I actually read the pilot script recently. Mm. Uh, that that's another thing as a writer. Uh, I don't mm. know if you know this, but it, it, you become a better writer when you read more screenplay. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I read the script for From, uh, and that that was really great. Um, that one kid's good with Scott Cortian Moore. But yeah, did you have you interviewed Cortian? So he's he's very talented and uh, yeah he's he's a um, 
he's he's going big places, man. He's really oh, yeah. good. He's like, oh my god, like he's like a what do you, hidden gem. That makes sense. Like you know, like they, like a diamond. Totally. In the, like he's like, oh my god. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You're you're a fan of his work. What is your favorite food? Let's choose favorite food. I'd say Mexican, Mexican or Thai. Yeah. Yeah, I have a real uh, love for Mexican street corn these days. Like, it's great. It's like uh, corn on the cob, and they'll put this crema dressing on it with, with uh, some, uh, what is it, uh, like paprika or chili flakes. Oh, that sounds so good, sorry. Oh, buddy, it, it's incredible. Is there, is there a food you can't stand? Like, oh my God, I can't eat this. Like, you know, certain people don't like certain foods. Eggplant, I'm not a fan of eggplant. Uh, hey, I can see that. I can like see it. Turnips or parsnip. I think it's just the flavor does something weird to me. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Squash. I'm not a big fan of squash. However, I do love butternut squash. That soup. makes sense, right? I do love butternut squash soup. Uh, what else? Yeah, I say that. What about so, you? So, uh, I meet you, bring you uh, eggplant and uh, turnips. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for doing my podcast. Here's a basket of turnips for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, personally, I like, I really like burgers, but I, I don't like that much sushi. Sushi is weird. I do really like sushi too, though. And I do, I do like burgers. Uh, Excuse me, I don't know why I keep taking a little sip of my coffee here. Are you allergic to Skype? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, what were you saying? Just you were saying about sushi, and then you were talking about burgers. You really like. do love sushi, and I do love <clears throat> burgers. To, for, for me on a burger, though, I love the sweet and the salty, so... You, you you put a little bit of like you know guacamole on there. I was gonna say guacamole is really good. Guacamole, awesome. you get some bruschetta tomatoes. You get some you know maybe pine. You put a piece of pineapple on a burger. It's Never incredible. had that. It. It's, it's really good. It's incredible. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, little, interesting little food chipotle, combo. Little chipotle sauce. It's yeah. It's a good time. Wow. If you don't want me to ask, because you started to ask this, what nationality are you? Because I'm Italian, on my dad's side, and my mom's side, she's French, Canadian, Polish. I'm uh, half Polish and half Irish. Wow. Yeah, my mom was born and raised here in Ontario, and my dad was born and raised in Ireland and came over when he was a young boy wow. and immigrated to, to, yeah, to Ontario. Sorry to ask that, because my, my mom's side, she's French, Canadian, German, and Polish. My dad, he's just Italian. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, uh, are there any projects they have in the works? Anything come up in the works for Mr. Drew? Yeah, I got I got a few things in the fire. Um, like I said, I'm I'm writing a couple things right now, working on a TV series and, and working on my feature uh, that that I that I hope to make relatively soon. Um, there's another. Uh, movie that i'm i'm like attached to right now that we're looking to shoot hopefully in the fall if not um early to 2023 and that would shoot in in la um and then uh what else i just wrapped something called dangerous connection it's a it's a thriller uh it's like a thriller film that we shot on the east coast of canada not too far from where scott is filming his show um <clears throat> So yeah, so that'll come out next year, I think, and um, and and Five Days of Memorial is on Apple right now. And yeah, Duncan so coming back, good. and Duncan coming back would be cool. Cross my fingers that Duncan comes back. That'd be cool. That would be pretty great, you know. So wow. yeah, and then and then you just got more podcasts coming out, and then and then plotting to take over the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Juju. What advice would you give younger people that want to become an actor, voice actor? What is your advice? Juju's My advice. advice um, I, I, I think, I think, like, you just got to know why you want to be an actor. I think you know, you want to know why you're getting into it for the right. You want to make sure it's for the right reasons. It's, it's for like, you know. Maybe you're a shy kid and, and, you, and you, you want this outlet, you know, you want to be able to sort of put yourself in other characters' shoes so that you can express yourself more. 
right? Mm -hmm. I, I know for me that that's definitely where it stemmed from when I was younger because I was very shy growing up, very shy. And I, I looked at, to it as an outlet. Like I said, I had a very imag vivid imagination. And so I, I was able to just sort of take on these characters and, and get lost in them, you know? Um, but, but past that, I think, I think it's just, uh, all, all I would say is if you're going to do it, do it from your heart, always find your heart in, in, in something, right? Like you're doing this podcast because there's some calling in here that that's like, I, I, I want to just, I, I don't know what it is for you, but you know what it is for you because that's the only way you're fully going to commit to doing something, right? If, if it doesn't feel like work and it just feels like fun. Right. Okay. And that, and that would, that'd be another thing I'd say is like, always uh, find the fun in it. Yeah. You know, always like um, I, I, you know, it's safe to say that, and you know, I've been at this for a couple decades now. And, and I think that I, I still find it fun. You know, I don't, I don't consider it work. Like a lot of jobs, I still just do it. I don't want to say like for free necessarily, but, but, but some, some gigs I would, you know, like just, just to be able to, it's just a privilege, you know, to be able to, to be able to work on some, some great stuff. I like Taylor like, be able to do this as a, if you know make the make a living from this, right? I like to like stay humble. Remember you came from, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's important to stay humble, but also uh there's a tendency for people to dim their light, if you know what I mean by when I say mm -hmm. that. Uh you, there's this tendency to want to kind of shrink yourself, you know, uh so that you fit in with everybody else. But I think you know, I think, I think you do have to recognize like within you, what your calling is and, and, and let that shine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like your, I really like your advice. Like it's really, really touching. Drew. So. Oh, thanks man. I'm, I'm glad that you're, you agree with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Drew, would you be willing to come back on for part two, answer some fan submitted questions somewhere down Absolutely. the line? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love any chance that I can to interact with the fans for sure. Always. Cause that'd be cool. Like imagine like, for example, like Duncan lover, 60 hours. I'll just make up. So ask, <laughs> ask a blah, oh, yeah, blah. They're a very good person. They're, they're really, really nice. Uh, yeah. They're from Idaho. Yeah. They're, they're a great person. <laughs> yeah. That's that cool. Is like, cause they could submit questions. All, cause I'm sure there'll be people that say, Oh, I asked Duncan. I'm like, sure. Yeah, of course. You know, I figured yeah. I asked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know. Let me know if anyone hits you up and they want they want to ask any kind of questions. And yeah, let me know. Now, before I ask you my last question, do you have any questions, Drew? Do have any? I don't have any questions for you. I, I just I just commend you for 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 doing this. You know, for for putting your heart and soul into this, and your you know, and and, and like you know, you're finding you're finding your voice through your own podcast. I think that's awesome, and I think that. I think it takes a lot of courage to just put yourself out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I think it's really brave that you're just, you're like, you know, I'm going to put myself on camera and I'm going to talk to these people and I'm going to, you know, reach out and see if they want. And, you know, I'm sure there's some people that, that unfortunately can't make the podcast, but, but that's just life. Right. And, and you just, you just keep going forward. Right. You just keep moving forward. So I, I just want to thank you, man. I, I, I like, I'm glad you reached out to me, you know, and I'm glad that we got to, to, to see each yeah. other in person and, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me on and, and shout out to all the huge total fan, you know, total drama fans out there in the world. And, and uh, yeah, thanks for keeping, uh, keeping us alive, you know? Thank you. Now, Drew, is there anything you would like to promote? shout out like i'll link down below in the video description i think uh yeah like if you if you want to interact with me on on socials like my uh my my instagram is at drew nelly uh d-r-e-w-n-e-l-l-y and if people are still on twitter these days i'm not sure if they are uh my twitter handle is at drew nelson live and you can uh, interact with me on there too if you want um and, and like I said, I tried my best to, to, you know, try to answer everyone's uh, questions and, and try to, you know, start a dialogue going. Cause I, I yeah, I, look, I, at the end of the day, it's like the fans, when you, when something actually resonates 
with 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 someone outside of your own circle it it means a lot you know so so again you know the fact that you're such a huge duncan fan like i'm a huge fan of yours now you know what i mean Thank like you. it's it's a mutual it's a mutual thing so Thank you. oh yeah uh, what i like to say i like to say like the fans are what make people you know i mean like we, we buy their merchandise we buy you know i mean the yeah. fans buy, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I know it's huge, and and you guys come and see us at the conventions, and you know, and, and you follow us on the social channels, and so it's it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew, for being an awesome, amazing guest. It was an honor to chat with you. I had a great time. Thank you. Likewise, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for for bringing me on. Yeah, and thank you, and too, to Carly for helping you. Thank you. Yes, Carly. Thank you. Thank you for for letting me know about Mr. Joe here. Is is it before also before I do my last closing words? Do you have anything you want to say to Carly? So, okay. uh, Carly, you're the best, and and I miss your your, your smiling face, and uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Yeah. Well, thank you again, everybody, for watching. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Drew. Everyone, stay awesome. Thanks, guys.